I'm Liz Suter. I'm an assistant professor of environmental sciences at Malloy College. Hi, I'm Sarah Hu, and I'm a postdoc fellow at Woods Hole Oceanographic. And we are going to present today the first lesson for the Amplicon topic for BVCN. Okay, so this is some introductory material on using Amplicons in bioinformatics. And um, some, so for some of you, you might know some of this already, but it's just some background that's important to understand before you start working with Amplicons. So first we're going to just discuss what are Amplicons and then go through some of the different pipelines that um, scientists use for processing Amplicon data and then what the actual output is of these Amplicon analyses. So whenever you do an Amplicon analysis, you're working with an amplified gene target. Um, usually, this is the small subunit of ribosomal RNA, SSUR RNA, and for different domains of life, we use different targets. So usually for prokaryotes, for example, well, always for prokaryotes, prokaryotes, for example, we're using the 16S rRNA. For eukaryotic organisms, we use the 18S. And if you are looking at metazoa, um, like fish, for example, for eDNA assays, you might be using the 12S from mitochondria. Um, so the S in here just denotes the size of this subunit, uh, um, which has to do with how quickly it sediments in a centrifuge. So that's all the difference between these. But we use this target because it's usually the, a very conserved um, target among the different domains of life. There are studies that use other types of targets. So for example, for fungi, sometimes they use ITS, the internal transcribed spacer, or they'll use mitochondrial CYB for some metazoan studies. But I think most of us are microbial ecologists, so we mostly talk about 16S ribosomal rRNA. So the rRNA gene, which sometimes we, called, we call 16S rDNA, um, has different regions. Uh, so here's a map of the gene and it's some of its secondary structure, and we can divide this into different regions. So um, here is a linear map of the nine hypervariable regions of 16S rRNA. And so we have different primers that can target different regions of this. If you want to look at the full, um, sometimes we look at the full sequence of the rRNA gene, it's about 1500 base pairs long, but usually you can only do that really with methods like Sanger sequencing. For next generation sequencing, we can only sequence very small chunks. So we have to target a subregion of the rRNA gene. Um, and usually for 16S rRNA, we're looking at V4, V5, or V6. These three hypervariable regions have been shown to represent the full diversity of the gene. Um, and so they're pretty good targets for Amplicon analysis of prokaryotes. And so using a phylogenetic analysis of ribosomal genes, you can build phylogenetic trees. This tree is uh, one of the more well-known ones because it encompasses all three domains of life. But this was actually built from um, ribosomal proteins. But if you were to build a ribosomal RNA gene, you would see a similar relationship between the domains. So to analyze an entire microbiome, there's a whole series of steps for this workflow, starting with um, sample collection and uh, processing of samples from the field and then in the wet lab. So before you even get into bioinformatics, you would have to collect your sample, extract the DNA, um, do a, a PCR step, but there's really multiple steps in here where you have to clean up your PCR product. Um, and then you pool, your PCR product and send it to the sequencing center. Um, and then what you get back is raw sequences, usually um, from Illumina MySeq runs. So what we do with those raw sequences from the sequencing center is com comes under this sort of umbrella of bioinformatics. And then we also have some statistical, maybe ecological analysis that we'll cover in this topic um, over the next few weeks. But Focusing in on this bioinformatics step, there's a workflow within that bioinformatics step that can be generalized for different microbiomes. So this is a figure from Mike Lee, he's one of our instructors at BVCN, that he made that is available on his website for the basic 
generic overflow of working with amplicons. So you get your raw sequences from a sequencing facility. You have something called FASTQ files, which has the sequences, but it also has a lot of, these are files also have a lot of information about um, the quality of the sequencing runs and some other information. So usually the first step that you would need to do, and sometimes the sequencing facility does this, is something called demultiplexing. So, um, and we'll get into this when we get into the tutorials, but this is essentially your samples are barcoded. And so in this demultiplexing step, you're separating out by those barcodes. So you know which sequences came from which samples. Um, then there's a quality filtering step where you want to make sure you're trimming off those barcodes. You want to do a few other quality control um, steps in order to make sure you're only keeping high quality sequences, um, removing chimeras and things like that. And then you end up um, with FASTA files. So these are your raw sequences that you'll be working with, followed by your DREP application step. So in this step, you essentially are taking just the unique sequences because you don't want to run every single sequence uh, through a database and figure out what their identity is if you have multiple copies of the same sequence. So we, we just take out those unique sequences. Um, we, there's a chimera removal step, which can be sort of integrated before or after that. And then we want to generate our either OTUs or ASVs. So now we're working more so with ASVs, but some pipelines you might still um, be generating OTUs. So the differences between this is um, OTUs, operational taxonomic unit. So these are sequences that are clustered if they are 97% similar, at least 97% similar. Um, and ASVs are amplicon sequence variants. So these are uh, sequences. So now we're considering our unique units as 100% um, unique. So at the single nucleotide level, we're pulling out unique sequences. And so I think the field of microbial ecology is really moving towards using ASVs over OTUs. But the downstream analysis, which we'll cover in this topic later on, you can have as input data either OTUs or ASVs for those analysis. We can use um, either type of data for any further analysis. And those further analysis can be things like just plotting abundance or, look, or using multivariate statistics to determine patterns among different sample types, um, looking at uh, ecological parameters like diversity or, or putting things on phylogenetic trees. So there's a few th different things that you can do with Amplicon results, and we'll get to that. So I tried to divide all of these steps, including the last part, the analysis steps, into four kind of categories based on which pipelines you can use to run them. So the first steps of demultiplexing and merging your paired reads. So, so usually when you sequence, you have paired reads, like a forward and reverse read for each individual sequence. Um, so you have to pair those. Um, so those two steps, demultiplexing and merging, they can be done in these pipelines, Chime2, Mother, or Data2. Um, and sometimes this step is also, especially the demultiplexing and sometimes even the merging is done by the sequencing facility. So you might not even need to do that. The next sort of category of steps is the quality control steps. So these are the denoising, the trimming, the removal of chimeras, and then the pulling out of unique sequences or the dereplication. So the pipelines or the um, programs that we can use for that are also Chime2, Mother, or Data2. So all three of these perform similarly. And then the third point, the third sort of group of steps here, constructing your alignment, building your count tables, and building your taxonomy files also can be incorporated into all three of those approaches, time to mother or data to. Um, many people will pick one of those, run through all three of these um, first parts of the workflow, and then take their resulting count table, their, tax, their taxonomy or their tree, and move into R and analyze, um, or Python. They can also do any of the, um, coding languages and do their analysis there. However, you can continue and do some statistical um, analyses or diversity analyses with Chime and Chime 2 and Mother. Um, however, if you took those data and you move into R, 
you can use um, packages like vegan or PhiloSeq. So these are two examples of um, programs or packages that have a lot of like ecological um, functions that help us analyze these type of data. So I also wanted to give sort of a rundown of how you can implement um, these different approaches. So um, for Chime 2 and Mother, these are mostly and usually implemented in the command line, whether it's natively on your own computer or in a virtual computer. Um, there are uh, graphical user interface or GUI options for Chime 2. One is uh, available through Chime, the Chime 2 group. It's called QStudio. And then there's another one that's available through the Cyverse network. It's called DNA Subway Purple Line. So I put links for all of these on the right here, and I'll make these available on the um, lesson page as well. So uh, the second approach here, Mother, is usually run through the command line. And I think there was some um, effort to make uh, a GUI available, but I think that's still under development. So I put a couple links for tutorials here and the initial documentation for Mother here. Um, so Data2 uh, on its own can be implemented in R, uh, but aspects of Data2 um, can also be implemented through this same GUI as the one for Chime2, the DNA subway purple line. And then the two packages that I mentioned for analyzing count table and taxonomy data, PhiloSeq and Vegan, those are usually implemented in R. Another important aspect of Amplicon analysis, especially for your taxonomy assignment, is which reference database you're using. So in each of those pipelines, you will be asked to um, import a reference database. And usually when, I think for, mostly for, especially microbial ecologists, we use the Silva database for 16S rRNA, and they also have an 18S rRNA available at Silva. And they frequently come out with new versions of this. So you um, want to include the most up-to-date version every time you import a Silva database. RDP is also an option for 16S RNA, rRNA that you'll see used in sub -pub some publications. And they also have a fungal database for 28S. Um, PR2 is one that is used for 18S rRNA, especially for protists, uh, protist studies. Green genes is one that was, was used previously. It's no longer maintained, but you'll occasionally see it in publications. And I think a lot of the fungi people are using uh, Unite, which is a database for fungal ITS. So I also wanted to show you what um, type of data you get out of Amplicon analysis. So I just put up a few examples of a project that I was recently working on. So this is an example count table that you would get out of Chime 2. Um, so on the left here, even though this says OTU ID, these are IDs that correspond to each of my ASVs, my Amplicon sequence variants, and going across on the top are names of samples. And so each of these numbers is a number of raw counts, how many times we saw this ASV appear in one of these samples. You also get a taxonomy file. So each one of those ASVs from the previous file is associated with a full taxonomy. So you can see its domain, its phylum, and so on, usually hopefully up to the species level. So this is its identity. And that is also associated with a confidence. So how confidently could the algorithm place it in that taxonomic um, ID bin. And then another thing that you get out of thing, um, some of these, like Chime 2, is a tree file. So sometimes you might want to actually view the phylogenetic tree, which would look something like this. Um, so this is the relationship of all my ASVs with each other. But um, often you use this tree file for other downstream analyses. So we'll get to that more when we talk about the multivariate statistics, but things like Unifrac, for example, would require this as input um, for looking at ecological patterns. And so that's it for the intro. Um, upcoming after this, we'll start to talk a little bit about the caveats of some of these analyses. We'll get into removing contamination. Um, there's a lot of sources of contamination, no matter what type of your type of samples you have. So it's important to remove those. And then we're going to go through some tutorials, both for 
analyzing amplicons and all of these pre-processing processing steps, as well as analyzing them statistically and looking at things like diversity um, and making plots. 